Hello guys, welcome back to King Designs, and today we're doing Blaze Farm. So, at the moment, we are on a creative version of my Let's Play World on a server. We're doing this specifically to replicate the sort of internal lag that there may be in a world that's got some things going on in it. So all the things we're going to do, all the timings, all the piston things, if we do them, are factored into that, so they should then work in any world, because this is a substantially laggy world with all this redstone going on here and all the hoppers and everything else and this will get transferred across the whole server so if it works on here it should work on anything so we're doing blaze farms and we're doing single blaze farms so one spawner and also duo blaze farms so two spawners I don't know if I get onto the duo today probably to do a single on this video but first of all I set up a few places in my let's play world which we can actually look at for the spawners so this is a creative copy, this is not my actual Let's Play world, don't worry about that. I've got a single spawner, which is in there, we can do for a nice test. I've got a simple duo spawner, which is over here actually. So two spawners, very close together, same level, no, very nice placement. And then we've also got one that I was looking at originally in my Let's Play world. And this is a slightly more complex duo. And that's just because... Oh, let's go back. Thank you. Because these are on different levels. There's one inside that obsidian cube. And there's one inside that one. So we look at kind of... Overall, the whole two videos maybe. We're going to look at different level ones. A simple one and the single one. And the single design will be related to the duos as well. They'll probably use the same sort of single bit. But then the stuff going between them is going to be a vastly different story altogether. So there probably will need to be a separate video for that. So before we start actually going into Nether and playing around different things, we need to go back to basics and understand you know, how blazes work and how spawners work. Okay, so I'm going to spend a number of hours setting this up to show you what blaze do, the properties of blaze and the properties of spawners and how we can use them in this design. This is the most important part of the video. The actual building of the blaze farm itself is not the important part. It's understanding how we should build it. Once we know that, we can build it rather quickly and we test it for designs, and that'll be fine. But if you don't get this point, or understand this, or watch this bit, then you won't understand anything we're going to do and why we've done it on the rest of the video. So you won't even understand why a design could be good and why a design could be bad. And this is something that people don't understand with mob spawners because they are impossible to kind of test one design against the other in general. So we're going with this then. First of all blaze spawners and blaze. Now blaze do spawn naturally in nether fortresses now. They also spawn in blaze spawners. Now for practical reasons it's best to use an actual spawner to collect them up especially if you're using mass amounts of them so you don't hit the mob cap and you don't mess around with that. So blaze spawners can spawn two blaze spawners per nether fortress and nether fortresses can spawn into each other so you can have sort of fortresses which look like they have more or less if they kind of merge and that part gets deleted so you can get triple blaze spawners or even quadruple blaze spawners are theoretically possible but just incredibly rare so double blaze spawners near each other on one fortress are not too common and they're not really rare but they are uncommon um, so blaze himself, they are two blocks high, that block and that block, like so. And the bottom block on the mob, so if this, when you're standing on here, and you look at the light level up here, if the block light is 11 or less, then a blaze can spawn there. It has to be 12 or above to stop the spawning. That's important if you want to turn the whole mob trap off. When they're docile, so when they're not actually tracking a player, they will automatically sink to the ground. That's the most important part of this that you'll probably learn if you don't know it already. Most people should know that. And they only drop blaze rods when the player kills them. There's a different drop on Xbox, they drop glowstone as well I believe, but we're doing PC. You get 10 experience per kill, which means you need 83 for level 30, or 176 for level 40. They're key points to know. And you can move them around with pistons or lava, or no, if you let them fall down. Lava is the most important thing to learn from this. You can move them with lava. It doesn't hurt them. It doesn't kill them. 
that's a good little thing to play with and they will swim up through lava streams so that's important as well we we'll go to the mob spawners now this is something that some people don't understand especially other youtubers don't seem to quite understand the mechanics behind the rest of it I'm going to tell you, talk to you about and these are the most important thing in making an effective design and this is also why you cannot test one design against the next without actually understanding how it works and then if it's good or not depending on these next few things we're going to go through um, because of this mobs will transpawn from the spawner they will transpawn four mobs between 200 and 799 ticks so between 10 and 40 seconds so on any mob farm you have you could have it such that if you're tracking to say level 30 and you're doing 83 blaze the minimum time is 83 divided by 4 so just over 20 so 21 times by 10 so 210 seconds could be possible to have 83 mobs spawn which is just over 4 minutes under 4 minutes, around 4 minutes anyway so possible you could get 83 blaze in 4 minutes if they go at the quickest possible time and 4 mobs spawn every single time but equally they could take around 40 seconds so you could have 4 times that so it could take 16 minutes that's entirely possible if you try and track one design against another and you do hundreds of hours of testing this massive random variable here will destroy any of your results so you cannot compare one design against the next you can only compare them if they follow the next things we're going to go through and that will be how you know they're more efficient you can't actually track them on an average time because you won't ever get a positive reading so if mobs fail to spawn when they try and spawn four mobs if all of them spawn actually fail so say try and spawn four mobs at once if they all fail then the spawner will then try and spawn another mob every tick until it succeeds so if all spawns are blocked then this clock with random clock in it, it will be delayed until it spawns at least one mob and then this whole time will start again so any sort of block that you've got blocking a spawn will make the whole process longer and longer and longer so it's really important to make sure as many of those blocks are free as air blocks or spawn blocks as possible now we're going to spawners themselves if you're within 16 blocks of a spawner so if you're within 17 so 16 or less blocks away around the spawner on a big radius then the spawner will be active while it's active the spawner will spawn mobs within a 8 by 2 by 8 block volume centered on the actual center of the spawner and we'll go through that exactly in a second and this is the most important bit that most people don't understand mobs can spawn at fractional x and z coordinates so if you're looking at this you say the middle bit and if you say we're at an exact number or something in that x and z then they don't always spawn the middle they might spawn on the edge they might spawn in the corner they can spawn at any point on the block on the x and z coordinates but they always spawn integer y coordinates so they always spawn on a solid block or on the top of an air block so there or there or on the air block next to it they won't spawn part way through a block that's also very important now go on to this these apply to any mob spawn you have but these ones are going to be zombie skelly and blaze specific because this is what their mobs happen to be too high so vertical spawning they are too high around we said 8 by 2 by 8 so the actual corner of the spawn is actually here we'll go through exactly why that is in a second so one down one up there's a too high bit of that so they can spawn where this half step is or on top of this one now that means that blaze zombies and skellies actually show to be a four high spawning people think or assume because they can spawn on here as the mob is two blocks high then they'll be above the spawner and if they're below then they'll be below so basically as a blaze is 1.8 meters high if they spawn here then they'll be 1.8 meters high just less than the actual player height because the player height if I'm standing here the eyes are actually your 0.62 so you're less than 1.8 meters high so blaze should be taller than you so if you could stand there then they might not be able to if you've got something blocking it but there really shouldn't be any problem with that so basically you need this top block air 
If this is air, then they can spawn here. If this one is blocked, they cannot spawn here. And that's basically that. And they cannot spawn below the spawner itself because if they're trying to spawn that level and there are too high mob, they get stuck in the spawner and that spawn will fail. So this is an 8x8x2 eight eight area. Just showing you here. The lower Y point on the lower X and the lower Z, which is the northwest corner. So that little tiny corner down there, that is the exact center of where we're going to do calculations from. And it's 4 either way. So that is the total spawning area which things can spawn on, on some on the y axis at least we look at right now. So where mobs can actually spawn not exactly in the middle, so mob could spawn here or here or in the corner, then if they're trying to spawn in here but one block down, then they'll fail to spawn as they get caught in a solid block on the outside. So to make this actually work, the required volume is actually 8.6 by 8.6 by 3.8. They're 1.8 meters high, so that's the 3.8, 1, 2, 3.8. And the 8.6 is actually each way. So you divide between 2, so 8.6 altogether. So it's actually 4.3 if every direction from the actual center. So actually 4.3, so it's like there or something. Which means also this block here should really be left as air or spawning platform or something so that they can all spawn. If you just picked an 8 by 8 by 4, so just say that this is a 4 high, so 8 by 8 by 4, so this grid and 4 high, then you also have a failure rate of 1.125% on average. So there's a 1.125% 1 1 chance that something will spawn against the edge and fail to spawn. If those happen and all four of those spawns fail, then you get delay in the whole thing and things get slower. So we carry on. So to make it pot maximum potential, you need a 10 by 10 by 4. So like I said, there's a 0.3 on either, every side you want to configure into this, but to get it to work you need another whole block because you don't have a kind of a, a half slab which is sort of sideways yet. So this is due to the 0.3 extra on each bit. So that's what we want to configure to make the maximum potential possible to make as many things spawn as possible. If you have a less sized one, you may only get three or two spawn each time. You wouldn't get the four. So carry on. So to make most efficient, this is a 3D version of that. So the top block is glass because that's just an air block. It's not actually a spawning block itself. It's just the block needs to be free so things can spawn on the layer below. And I left these sides off to show you the kind of middle bit. The green is the four by four bit around the actual spawner itself and then this yellow bit is the outside. There's lots of colour coding in this. So that's what you want for the best sort of spawning. Like I said there. If any block is actually blocking any of those pieces of wall or glass or any of those bits then spawning will be reduced. If that happens to such that no mob spawn on that cycle then there will be delay and the whole thing will slow down. But really if you have any blocks blocking those things then you might get only two or three blaze spawn instead of the four which will slow things down I said that already, that's ok but there's more, there's something that is more important um, well, equally as important as I say there's a spawn condition checker so in any mob spawner if there's more than six of that mob in a 17 by 9 by 17 area it will not spawn any more mobs while that condition is met so this is a 17 by 17 by 9 area around the mob spawner, just with this yellow wall, which will turn into an orange wall in a minute. So if your collection point of mobs is within this box, then you're a little bit screwed because it will not build up to a vast amount of mobs. If your collection point is here, let's say, underneath the spawner, underneath the area, then your mobs can keep building up, keep building up, keep building up. Here is a representation of everything we talked about so far. I think it looks quite pretty. I think it's going to be the thumbnail, it looks really good. This is green bit is the player radius, so if you're within this sphere, it, it's a sphere, don't worry, um, the sphere's around about okay. If you're within this, then the mobs will spawn on spawner, that's good. Your collection point needs to be outside this orange grid, which is the actual um, checker. So anywhere outside that and you're fine. And the actual blocks you need to avoid blocking are these ones in the middle, including the glass. 
and you can't do anything about the block underneath the spawner like we said that's going to happen whatever so yes that is the key points of how you make any mob spawner work specifically on blaze and it also works for the other ones as well you can adjust it to different types of mobs you can adjust it for sort of skeletons and zombies does the same thing as this actually exactly the same apart from blaze we're always full and they fly and there's a bit different mechanics than that basically we're going to build everything off of that you understand that then we can make an effective farm so all we need to do is go into nether now and start building around that grid and try different designs to get our blaze away from this within the 10 seconds because the last key point is it doesn't really matter what you design it's something that people don't kind of understand it doesn't matter how slow your whole thing is or how you move things or anything else as long as your blaze exit this grid within 10 seconds so that's quite a long time for blaze to move out of the area um, otherwise no, the next cycle can't start yet so it won't actually stop any mob spawning so the two key things to take away from this whole thing is such that you need to make sure things exit this area within 10 seconds and also you want to make sure that all of those blocks in the middle are not blocked by anything otherwise they may reduce spawning overall so with that we're going to go into an actual world now and I'm going to start by doing something that might be really really simple and see if that works so be right back okay before we test our first design I'll show you very quickly the setup I'm going to be doing for today just so you kind of understand why it's so big so this inner grid is the 8x8 eight eight area so 8 8 and such the next one is the area we need to make the 10 by 10 which is what we said before and the next one which is the next square out is going to be the outside border of that such that this will be an actual physical wall and everything inside will be the trap so that's what I'm going to do with that and thought I'd clear that up before I carry on so see you again in a sec so first thing you can do is play with lava because lava you can push mobs in it and they can swim up lava but for blaze they will sit on the top of the surface lava and not really go down so these have got fence gates underneath just open so they are basically are not a block they're the same as a sign so holding up some lava but they will rest on top so that's not a good idea next thing obviously look at is pistons so this is the ice cream cone shape that I made on the Hermitcraft server I thought Red Eyes dubbed it anyway, the, the ice cream cone. So this is basically a mass of pistons which are the biggest size of the whole spawning area you want. Because it gets to the point that you know, this is the most effective way to have the spawning part. They will always do three or four spawns normally. The only way they fail is if they're inside the actual bit in the middle, which is sometimes. And I also made sure that this bit is a glass block. So they can't spawn on top of here, otherwise they stand on top of the spawner and don't go anywhere. So it's just, just one of those things you have to get rid of if you want to make sure they all go down. Which means if they spawn on that bit, they will fail. So most often they do do three or four-ish, which is pretty good. Um, now it gets to the point that it doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you get those mobs down to a single point, and then you can kill them. If you want them in a single point, that is. If you want to just have them all spawned maximum efficiency you can just have a drop and a big room and you go in there and fight them if you really want to but us Minecraft players like to keep them all in one little spot and then kill them with potions or punching them or whatever so this has got them all down to one little bit which okay and it works you're still inside the 16 block player range if you're standing down here only just so this does work but there's a lot of pistons and a lot of people get scared of pistons no pistons are incredibly cheap I don't know why people get so annoyed about them in survival I will build the most efficient one not the cheapest but we'll look at other versions just to have a look at this but it gets to the point that I've actually put stair blocks on those blocks they're not actually solid blocks they're stairs upside down and no, you can get them down there but you've got to start looking at how many die on the way down so how many get hurt by pistons, how many get suffocated, how many get stuck and die and that will then limit your efficiency so on this I haven't really seen any get stuck and suffocated when these are all full blocks for the pushers then mobs will get stuck sometimes and get crushed and die um, 
But yeah, stone blocks seem to work okay. Normally when you do non-solid blocks, so things like glass and stuff as pushers, then they'll get stuck inside the actual block itself, but for these, they seem to be working. Because they get the full push, but they don't suffocate. Which is quite nice, but hard to place though. So that's a good little test for that. As you can see, there's one stuck there for the moment, but he's not getting suffocated because he's actually inside the thing. Go look at that actually. And he eventually makes his way out. So that's no block damage in theory. So that would apply the fact that you can actually put a crusher to this whole thing. Put it on a certain timer, make sure they all get down to a certain life without having some die, and then just throw your harming potion at the end. So you could just do in any sort of design, you don't need a crusher at all. Just throw a poison one, that will get hurt for a while, and then throw a harming potion. To be honest, if you've got poison potions and harming potions, I've got a witch farm. I might as well just do that instead of doing a silly crusher because they're not very reliable. If they get uneven damage, you start losing some. They're not really quite worth the hassle if you can just do poison potions like they are. And if that's ready yet, then chuck them in. It's like so. And that would be that. And if things go in to there and such. And that would work. So I did some timings on this, and no, I did a couple of tests, and just to show you that there's a massive range in times. The first one was about 14 minutes to get 83 blaze. Second one was 9 minutes 44. So you can see how massively different the times can be on exactly the same farm. So you cannot compare them directly, but we know that this is the maximum potential on the spawning part. And so far in this design, I haven't seen any die, so they should all get down to the collection point. So that in theory is already a maximum efficiency design if you can get them down to the corner at the bottom in a way that you want, and then you can kill them easily. So now it comes to the point that you know, we can already make it maximum efficiency it seems, but we need to make it best for the player. So convenience, get them stuck down the proper bit, maybe do a crusher. Play around with that. So I'm start doing that sort of thing and I'll be right back. Okay, so before we move on to the next bit, I need to reiterate very, very strongly the importance of this big spawning area up here. You probably know this by now, but any mob trap which is smaller than this, with this whole area up here, will be less efficient. That's how you track it. That is the only possible thing you look at, along with how many blades die on the way down. Any smaller trap. You can't say this one's cheaper or that one's cheaper than this one because it's got less pistons in it, well, it's got less spawning area in it, therefore it'd be less efficient. That is the bottom line. If you've got max efficiency, it's going to be more resource intensive, obviously, because it's bigger. So, if you're going to have a bigger design, you need a bigger cone, so you want to get down to one point. You're going to go down, 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 until you get to one point. Now, that gets a bit far fetched, doesn't it? It's kind of moving too far down, so if you waited here, the spawner is no longer active. If you want to wait up here somewhere, you need some sort of lava stream to bring those blaze up to a correct level. So we're playing with blaze and lava over here. And blaze will swim up a column of lava or through bits of lava like normal mobs do through water. So up they go. Now I'm playing different ways of manipulating them in the lava stream. So you do a tripwire, it doesn't really work very well. Because of the way they go up, they kind of get a bit stuck and yeah not very fun so you get stuck in like so not very good if you use it with a clock like this one here you can get the blaze to be manipulated pretty well so just with a see-through block and sort of the clock they go up and then they'll get pushed sideways so that works that's fine they will not actually pathfind around lava so they won't actually be swept into lava stream they do not go sideways at all on their own, they only go up. They're quite happy sitting there. This is a bigger one, a bit more special. But you chuck a load of blaze into there. This just runs a clock, doing the same sort of thing as this one here, but on a more efficient level. So these will keep going up on a timer, and they'll make the all the way up the top. Now, on any sort of piston thing or anything like this, it doesn't actually matter how long it takes for you to get from here all the way up to here just that they do eventually because if you're AFKing there you don't need them instantly, you need them to build up over time so the only difference that can be between any design is kind of 
a few seconds going from one bit to the other when there's 83 of them. But if you've got more efficient trap, then it should negate that anyway. So yes, they all come up to fine with that, and that's one way you can do it in a up and sideways direction. But obviously you can move blaze in different ways, so you can use little piston tracks. So you put blaze there, he moves along. Other ways of doing it. There's some special ways where some people are doing um, sort of fence posts and full blocks and get them stuck in between, such that they would actually see that those two side bits will be too high for them as they're 1.5 blocks. As it moved, then they'll be pushed along. I don't actually think that works anymore. At least I couldn't get it to work very well for what I wanted to do, so we'll leave that one. Another one is a piston caterpillar track. So jump onto the other creative world. So I've got a whole load more things to show you here, which is going to be the basis of the pretty much the whole design I'm going to do for the single blade spawner, I believe. So we'll run through this. This is the conveyor belt. Let's put some mobs in here like so. Just chuck some in there. If all the blades come down to a point like that, and they go along the conveyor belt and go into a lava stream and come up towards the player. Now, they all get into the lava stream eventually when this cycles around. And all good is a little clock on here with a pulse generator coming out of it, pushing them all along every now and then. So, as long as they get into there eventually, then it will be fine. You'll see this when it goes back around, they'll probably go mostly into there. You only expect maybe four or something per cycle. There's only one or two left there now. They will get in there eventually. So that's a good way of doing it, if you can get all your blades down to a one wide area. No, which is an easier thing to do than a 2x1 or a 1x1. And to do that, you can use tripwires. I use tripwires a long time, and I tried to use tripwires in a sort of a 4 wide. So if you had the farm like this, I have did holo testing months ago trying to get a blaze farm, which was... A chip was along there, 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 and I could do it, but it was incredibly crazy and a bit insane. So that wasn't really a sensible way of doing it. So over here is different ways I can do a two-sided only. So if I have this replicated on both sides, I'm going down to channel in the middle, which is going to turn on these, and they're coming up to the player. You can see they're mostly in there now. Me spawning them in the half stabs, sometimes they get a bit stuck. In actual practice, that'd be fine. Um, so I'm playing with different things along here. This little thing I was doing for my gold farm a long time ago on my first Let's Play, actually. So you can go onto a thing and it'll push you along. No, it just goes up like so. But if you get your blaze stuck in the actual piston, like so, then they'll be extended and you'll have to have some problems. So to get around that, you need to make clocks into this. And this one's above. So the piston is above the tripwire and this one the piston is below the tripwire and you can see that each level is that far apart so there's two block gap and this one there's only one block gap so this one's much more compact vertical version but you need to start putting clocks in so if you get stuck in this one again then it gets stuck and your blades will start getting piled up and it would be very fun so you're also using stairs because they're a block that no, the actual mobs can fall down on and kind of rest down on and it works well Beforehand, you'll be using them anyway to make sure that the tripwire can work, but these work very well as they are. Then we go on to making sure that the tripwire stays safe. No, it doesn't get, it doesn't bother about things getting stuck like this. It will keep going. So different ways of keeping the clock going, like so. Let's turn over here actually. See that this will keep pulsing until something gets off of it, which is a good way of doing it. And over here, I've got a piston, just basically. Cutting the signal off, if I just get a, let's see, if I get a lever out, I can show you quite easily. Get a lever onto that. So basically this makes a little clock here, and this will cut off the signal every four ticks, and just keep going around until the signal goes off. Now, that's fine in principle, but if you do more steps like this, then this one actually up here can turn this one here into a bud, and it will break it. So that's not the easiest way of doing that. So we're looking at different ways to do that instead. So this one here, this one also works. Now I'll keep going round in a clock, and that'll work like so. And that'll work fine stacking up as well. But I think, mm, I'm going to get rid of the piston, because pistons, I don't really want pistons in them as much. Um, I'd rather use just redstone. So I'm playing with clocks like this. I was doing them clocks like this for my last little nano farm I did. So basically, you know, if you have the signal off, 
then it'll go around in a clock. You turn it on and it'll stop the clock. It doesn't actually break the clock, it just stops it going around that point. So this one over here, it's going around in a little clock, like so. No, that works well. So invert the top bit and make sure that the whole thing isn't turned on by default. I quite like them. So you pile them up, you can make them work like so, and they'll work for whatever level you have. No, that's good, and they don't bud anything, and it's all hunky-dory and nice. Or you change it, you can have it a little bit different, you can have a two tick, two tick, and going around like so, it'll still work the same. You could do that if you really wanted to. I think I'll do something like this, or maybe this because I have the resources and I don't really care. Um, use up a little bit of space, but I might do that anyway, just the hell of it. Um, so yeah, I like these things, and if I have these on each side, the same principles, a little bit on the end for the clocks. Two massive sides of them. And then going down to a conveyor belt like so, bringing the blaze up through a lava stream, and then we can start looking at a crusher at the top. So I build that up now in that world, and I'll be back to show you it working. And it's done. My version of it anyway. And I do believe this is going to be 100% efficient if you're excluding the blocks on top of the spawner itself because your blaze spawns on there. They're probably not going to escape from that and get down to the trap. And the block underneath the spawner as well because they can't spawn there anyway excluding those blocks there every single other block is spawnable and is used in this trap not a single mob dies from any sort of damage being crushed or anything else not a single mob gets suffocated until we want them to in the end crusher every single mob gets down they spawn maximum i i think this is great every single mob gets to the end comes up a lava stream then they all come to the top now for this, I've got Crusher in this, so you can even prove that they're working very well. So open the floodgate and just push this button and they all come streaming down in one go. And they all come down at once, it's amazing. And all you do is then just close that buffer. And they'll get trapped in this little tiny spot here. Crush them, they get down to half a heart. Now if any of them be hurt by any sort of solid block damage before this, then some of them would die. Because no, they're half a heart now. You can sit there and just punch them, you can see them dying now. And you get the experience completely fine. You can use a potion of damage and just get rid of them that way. Or, you know, all the drops come through here. I, I love this, I think this is brilliant. And no mobs will come through. No, it's completely safe. I think it's brilliant. I'm really pleased with this, and there's some really cool stuff in this that I've put in. I've been spending, I spent maybe 15 hours, 10 hours or so doing this all of today. And I'm really pleased with it. We are just outside the range for the 17x17x9 17 by 17 by checker that's this grid here still so we're away from that we're a few, bo few blocks away from that up here we're above next to spawner I think it's great and <laughs> I, uh, I spent hours doing a different design here for the actual capturing and crushing and moving things and everything else and it was getting really really big and really really strange and it wasn't quite working how I wanted to and then I had a little breakthrough, and one of these moments you look at it and you go, actually, I could do something different. So I came back to here and I thought, no, I have been moving mobs to the side. But I thought, I wanted a trap such that they would kind of go up, and then be pushed across, and then just float down into a nice secure chamber. Because the point is, if you want to use hoppers to pull back the drops from when they die, so there's actually a hopper underneath that bit of carpet there, then you can't actually have them coming up that chute because you can't move hoppers with pistons. So I was thinking, you know, over here, or oh, I've moved them to the side, I've been playing with that, but, you no, know, how else can I do that? How can I make it work for a want? And then it came to this. I can move them sideways, and then I can move them sideways again. Really, really simple. It just came to me after a while, and thinking, you no, know, this would actually work. So they come up this stream, I'll just put a few in here just to show you. Oop. Oh, fence gates. I love fence gates, but they are annoying sometimes. So these will go up. This is just showing you what's going to happen over there. On my one moment, I just have a on-demand button. So they'll get stuck up here until I want them to come down. But on this little automatic clock, and they'll fall down here. Where they can be trapped, and you have hop underneath them and everything. So that is absolutely perfect, I think. I really like this. I spent... So many new ideas in this, I've got loads of bits everywhere, I, I, I really enjoyed building this. And it won't be a world download, because this is on my Let's Play world, it would be massive, and it's creative world and everything else. 
But I think I'll be building something very, very, very similar to this in my Let's Play world on a double spawner. The only thing I'll do then is just to make this grass proof and mob proof in general. So you put a bit of glass all the way along here. That would be safe for the mobs in the trap. And if you're actually staying in a little room here or something, so if you've got a portal coming into this room or coming down from a roof or something in a little kind of um, tower, then you'll be safe as well and everything will be safe still. But you would need to make a big cage around it otherwise to be safe from gas. but you would need to do it for any type of mob spawn in the nether anyway. But down here is I've done a clock underneath, which is shown you already, going to the pulse generator. Now this pulse generator seemed to work a lot better than another one I was looking at. Um, so I just went with this. This then goes up the back and goes into here and activates the bottom bit. Now I can just attach a very very easy little piece of wiring coming along here and pointing into this piston just to make sure this clock turns off when I want it to or just have a clock or no, just a signal coming down to here or something. You can trap this off very very easily to stop the clock from working so stop the conveyor belt. You could do that but if you're in the area, unless you've got like a base near or something and you want to save the lag, then it's not really an important thing to turn off the clock. Um, but yeah, if you're coming down here just for blaze, then I'll just keep the clock on. This is just showing you a shell version of what you can do. I've shown you lots of different things today with different possibilities, but I really like this one. Um, it comes out the back like so. I like it. <laughs> you can tell by my voice. I'm really pleased by this. Um, and it's really nice little interface here. Nice and compact. Nice bit of carpet. So yeah, that is kind of what I had planned to show you. And I'm quite happy with this design. So I will go on and make something similar to this in my Let's Play world. All we have to do for a double one, I can just have another conveyor belt coming in into this side. Just like so. And it will go in and go up. Nothing else would need to change, um, apart from we did something with minecarts, which I don't particularly want to do in my Let's Play world because they're not too reliable. And also for the minecart versions, the one on the Hermitcraft server, which I jump onto there now. So the one on the Hermitcraft server, which is this one, is not actually maximum potential like the one I had in the creative world, as it isn't the biggest spawning area on the top. Which would mean if you wanted this to make it work with minecarts on a duo with maximum size, then this whole thing needs to move down a couple of blocks with another whole load of pistons on top of that to go down. And then right at the bottom, all this thing we need to move down again. And you know, blades do get hurt here, they do die. So it's not particularly the most efficient um, duo blaze spawner, but it is less intensive on PCs. Now, the one I showed you is quite intensive and if you've got a low-end PC you might cry about it with the resources and the pistons and things but I love it and I'm definitely going to do it for myself. So let's kind of round off today. If you really want a duo blade spawner video specifically on things alternative just in conveyor belt then do tell me and really leave a like because it's going to have a lot of people wanting to see that to me do that because this video took a very long time to make but I'm very, very pleased with the result. So, I thank you for joining me, guys. No, please leave a like. This is a tremendous video. And if you survived this video, well done. Give yourself a pat on the back. Have a cookie. And say thank you in the comments for the cookie, so I know. See you, guys. <laughs> I'll see you on the Let's Play world when I've built my one.